All right, everyone, welcome back to that Variety Nerd. I'm Christina, and today we are jumping into some more WWE 2K20 goodness. So today um, I wanted to just kind of give you my thoughts on all the initial videos that have been put out, social media posts, things that we're just overall finding, and just kind of go from there. Um, so just giving my initial thoughts, giving you, an all, giving you all an update on the schedule, how the Twitter votes went, because I did real math here, people. I actually did math. I got like notes and everything. So if I'm looking over, I have like a bunch of just bullet points just kind of listed on a sheet of paper, just so that way I can sort of like make sure that I'm hitting what I want to get to. So as always, um, just sit back with your choice of beverage. Tonight we got ourselves an Arnold Palmer. I realize I probably shouldn't be drinking caffeine right now, but it is fine. Right? Right. So let's just dive right into this. All right, so in terms of the schedule coming up, here you go, folks. So this is kind of what I've been starting to work on is kind of like more of a formal digital, you know, schedule to just keep track of everything. Basically, we're gonna be starting with Showcase, then alternating between that and my career for the rest of the month. And here's why. So let me pull up my good old friend, the Excel sheet. So I ran not one, not two, not three, but four total polls, but there were only two votes that separated Showcase in my career. Then I narrowed it down the very last poll, and here we go. So still pretty much neck and neck. So that's why I'm like, okay, we're gonna do Showcase first, then we'll do my career. My career is gonna be more overarching. So like, and I'll show you all in just a second because it's so much, it's super long. But the first one we're gonna, the, four, the first of the three sort of shorter modes that we're gonna go through is showcase mode. I wanted to give you all a very specific breakdown as to where in the world, how are we gonna, you know, lay this out, right? So I actually came with like episodes. So we got six total episodes. We got 15 matches, all that stuff, just, yeah. So this is kind of the match sort of outline. I think it makes sense in the story and just like where everything's kind of going. So that's kind of what I was thinking about. I thought about the context because context is key. So yeah, um, that's the schedule, at least for the rest of October. November is going to be going into more my career and just sort of like more covering 2K20 stuff and just going from there. So pretty much my career, some of the main ticket items that I pulled out from comments, from social media, from watching the video myself, because like that's just how my brain internally works. Uh, the storyline, it makes sense. Uh, you basically start out with Red and Trey are basically high school best friends and they try to make it to WWE together and they basically show you how they got there. So it's pretty much like both of them are entering into the WWE Hall of Fame. So it's mainly all like flashbacks and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I'm here for it. I like those sorts of stories, but Red's going to be taking the primary focus um, from what I've seen so far which I'm here for because like, y'all, I have been waiting at least 10 freaking years for a freaking female my career mode, at least. Like, let me enjoy this, all right? But also, along with the storyline has come some complaints of the dialogue, some of the graphics. Um, people have been comparing it to like PS2 graphics, which is really funny because the first, one of the first scenes is basically red and trey getting bullied by like the wrestling team pretty much and like what's really funny is that when i first saw the high school scenes like with them in the cafeteria and everything i'm sure you all have probably have seen the, this clip that i'm talking about it literally reminded me of like ps2 graphics from like the game bully i'm not sure if any of you all are familiar with that game but that's kind of what it reminded me of but here's the thing like i don't care about graphics in a video game like you could throw me just like a really bad graphic game but if the game is good, I'm still gonna play it, right? Like, that's just how I personally roll. Also, something to keep in mind too is that we are entering into a new generation of gaming consoles starting like next year. We're gonna have the PS5 and then I think it's the Xbox Scarlet. I think that's what it's called. So we're basically getting two brand new gaming consoles next year. I don't think, especially after the upgrades the last two years especially, that they're gonna focus more so on graphics this year. Also keeping in mind of like, Uke's kind of like just piecing out deuces <laughs> earlier this year that probably had some sort of a role in that as well. I'm not excusing it, but I'm just saying like, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, okay, we need to really work on making this game replayable and also really flesh out my career more. So my guess is that they probably focus more on like making sure that the game had like all the different pieces and parts that need to be. Again, not excusing that, but I'm just giving some sort of rationale, playing devil's advocate, that sort of thing. Also, one other thing, 
yeah, so hair physics, yikes. <laughs> I'll just leave the hair physics at that. Yikes. <laughs> I like to do deep dive walkthroughs, so we're going to be spending a lot of time in my career because look at the breakdown by the numbers, right? Like there's approximately 100 total matches. That's kind of a combination of formal matches and brawls. There's 18 total chapters, all kinds of dialogue over... 270 cutscenes, <laughs> around 20, I think it's like 20 to 25 hours of total playthrough time and all kinds of career goals. So we've got a lot to unpack. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a tentative timeline for that particular mode. I'm just saying it's going to take us a while to get there. And I want to show you all as much stuff as I can. So we'll do like the side tasks and all that sort of stuff, I think, too. So get excited. Um, so yeah, next we're going to go ahead and dive into the bump in the night pack. Oh yeah, also something I wanted to mention about my career. So if you are on SmackDown Hotel, which is basically like kind of a one-stop shop sort of place for all these new updates and everything, pretty much these characters here are gonna be popping up for my career mode. I don't know if there's gonna be any more. So like Brooklyn Von Braun and like Cole Quinn's making a return. Buzz and Cole Quinn are actually have a podcast in my career. So that's pretty cool. So just letting you all know about that. But bump in the night, so you will be getting all these characters that are in green. So Wicked Aleister Black, Bray Wyatt, the, the Fiend Bray Wyatt, I should say, Robert Roode Zombie, Sasha Banks Zombie. So something interesting about the Sasha Banks Zombie and Rusev Pilgrim ones, the Sasha Banks Zombie, that one's actually going to be out closer towards Halloween because it's more of a seasonal sort of a tower. And they're doing sort of those seasonal sort of towers or modes within these originals packs. Um, thinking further ahead for Rusev's Pilgrim, you know, character in Bump in the Night. So these are all going to be Bump in the Night. So I'm guessing they're going to do like more seasonal sort of packs, which I'm kind of here for. So I'm really curious to know what they're going to do after this pack for sure. Generally speaking, I really liked what I saw so far. This particular showcase with Finn Balor's showcase in Bump in the Night, that one has Bray on commentary in some shape or form, and I'm here for it. Um, so the general Bump of the Night pack basically kind of looks like it's like text and also matches. Um, some cutscenes thrown in there as well. So it has some sort of elements of like, for example, Fire Pro, how it's like their season mode is like text-based a little bit. So they sort of go through that a little bit more with the towers where they'll have like a little bit of a cutscene or a series of cutscenes where they have text at the bottom and then you have like pictures and stuff like that and like still images, I should say. So yeah, um, I'm really excited about this original stuff. I want to see where it's going to go. So I'm personally, this is the thing I'm actually most excited about. Um, actually, no, second most excited about because female my career, I've only waited like freaking 10 years, basically. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I got for Bump in the Night. I'm excited. You should be excited too. We'll have the first episode on Halloween because that's very fitting. Uh, we'll do the towers as well because I heard and saw that they were pretty short. So we'll do the towers on YouTube as well and lump it into the Bump of the Night playlist. So next up on the menu is Showcase Mode and let's dive into that. All right, so Showcase Mode, it's kind of self-explanatory. We all generally know what the drill is for this. Um, again, um, I have a breakdown in my little table that's from earlier in this video. So if you wanted to see the breakdown, there's there. Anyway, um, pretty much it's one of those things where it's like one playthrough and done. Um, I feel like there's gonna be a better like concept sort of thing that they could have done with this particular mode or, or this particular showcase I should say. I'm still kind of working on that map because I feel like they're missing so many matches and it's like you can't have the four horsewomen encapsulate an entire division. So I'm still working on that concept map as we speak but it'll get done at some point and I will share you all what I would have done differently. Um, but in general I'm excited to play it. Um, you all voted for this to be first. There's going to be six total episodes as you saw in the breakdown earlier. So get excited. All right. So with universe mode, again, not a whole lot's changed, just some fine tuning. I, this mode just needs, a, it, to me, it needs an overhaul altogether. I'm like, I could take GM mode or leave it. Like I have fond memories of staying up like all night playing GM mode with my friends, but I think that you can mesh the two together and give us a fresh version of it. But yeah, there's a bunch of new promo lines, new cutscenes. We'll see if they actually play out because as we've seen in previous games, it'll be like, yeah, we added all these cutscenes, but we only see the same few cutscenes over and over and over again. 
So um, again, I'm open to doing a universe mode series on this channel, but I want to do it right. So that's going to be on the back burner. So if you want to see universe mode, let me know, give me some ideas, all that good stuff down in the comments down below. Uh, next up, we'll do roster updates. So again, going back to SmackDown Hotel. Um, so all the new people are underneath here. Um, this is including Bump the Night DLC um, and also the deluxe stuff as well. So pretty small list as to who's new. I think they had to remove more people than like add people this year. So that's why the roster is a little bit smaller, which they would have included more NXT UK people. But I mean, at least we've got Trent Seven in this year and we got Tony Storm and we got Rhea Ripley. So I think that's, I think that's pretty decent. I can't really complain about that. Right, right. Except for the fact, I'm not sure why the other two folks from the Forgotten Sons are not on the roster for some reason, but it's fine. We're, we're just going to roll with it for right now. Community Creations, got, they've got our back. So Brownie points to you all for that. All right. So in general, uh, my overall thoughts are there's a lot to unpack, first and foremost. Uh, I didn't even mention the new control system yet. So um, probably Tuesday when it's midnight and hopefully the game's installed, then um, I will be playing around with that uh, because, quite frankly, um, that's going to take some adjustment for sure, but I think we can all do it, right? We need to adapt. Um, anyway, uh, my initial thoughts, um, I'm excited for the amount of effort that they've put into my career but I think they did that kind of, and of course, original content too, but I think they might have done that at the expense of other aspects of the game. Um, for me, I want a functional game that has some cool modes in there and some cool gameplay. Does not take that much to make me happy. And also, for the love of God, just work on the hair physics. I, I mean, they've kind of gotten a little bit better in the last two games, but like, what is going on with the hair physics? Like, I need answers please. Um, but yeah, um, in general, I'm still excited for the game. Obviously I have that healthy amount of skepticism. I did pre-order the deluxe edition because like, why not? What else am I going to do on fall break? <laughs> but, um, I'm still excited. It's a game I look forward to every year, generally speaking, but generally speaking, I'm pretty stoked for the game outside of a lot of the issues. But I think it's sort of like one of those things where it's like, yeah, I want to enjoy this game, but there's so much going on here right so it's like I'm really hoping that this is not going to impact our you know experiences in each of these modes and in our gameplay and on online modes right um for me I am used to having games at this point and it's kind of a concerning trend in video games in general where it's like they'll have a game that's like rushed out like even if it's like DLC for example and it's like full of bugs like you go find any sort of like videos on the sims for example like in the recent game pack that we had like people were just creating their sims like usual and like their game would literally crash as they were like creating their sims basically the point i'm getting at is that i am and i think a lot of people are in this position too um, where it's like, I'm just getting fed up of having these games, especially by like companies and publishers and all that. And just, you know, reputable video games, generally speaking. Like, for example, look at what happened with NBA 2K20 this year, right? Like, look at how many glitches and things that went wrong there. So it's like, I'm noticing a very concerning trend that we're getting basically broken video games that aren't functioning and aren't working on release date. And some folks pay a lot of money, like myself included for video games, because you know what, we care about the video games, right? We want to see it do well. We want to see them create something refreshing and, you know, exciting. And I'm really excited about that. Um, but for the love of God, just have your game work <laughs> first and foremost, before you start adding these things. Like you can't build a house without a solid foundation. So, on that note, let me know what you all think in the comments down below. Um, what are your thoughts on this, on 2K20? Are you super, super jazzed about it? Are you like, oh God, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be a mess. Or just not thrilled about it whatsoever. Or are you kind of in the middle like me where it's like, yeah, I'm excited about it, but I just hope the thing works. <laughs> so let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you all are having a wonderful evening. Uh, wherever you are in the world or a wonderful day. I don't know. Time zones are weird. 
Um, but I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Um, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of that fun stuff here on YouTube. And I will see you all later. Bye, everyone.